A few hours before the show, it's action stations at the House of Balmain. All hands on deck to wow the media, the clientele, and Rihanna. We're very in retard. It's going to be complicated. Pierre Balmain was the first designer to make Paris and the world dream again after the horrors of World War II. Still today, his house pursues this mission to wow the world despite the crisis. Things seemed well underway. We had more customers, people who liked them, who loved them, and I liked that. And things were very nice. I was meeting very funny people, I was learning several trades at once. I loved my drawing and designing, and seeing things come together. But the general public doesn't really know this woman, this mistress of fashion, highly technical and a specialist in accessories and the oldest forms of embroidery. She made a big impact with her first show for Dior, with this fencer, a self-assured fighter, this bee, a symbol of Dior and fertility, and this t-shirt, the most discussed of the decade. We should all be feminists. Evidently not so evident at the time when you read about the heated debate it provoked. Since her arrival, Dior's profits haven't stopped multiplying, first by two, then by four. Cartier is the most renowned of the collectors. Since the 1980s, the House of Cartier has been reacquiring pieces from private collectors and international auctions. These exceptional pieces are exhibited around the world, where Cartier's creativity and incredible savoir-faire continue to awe. A new golden age of fine jewelry took place in the 2000s. Each year, the catwalks see a new collection from Cartier that continues to tell the love story between jewelry and haute couture. The jeweler's art is to conceal the frame, allowing the gems to take center stage. This was the start of a family saga, propelled by the invention of the famous logo from 1896 onwards. A hundred years later, it was still the same fabric with its acronym that assured the success and above all the profitability of the brand. And yet 40 years ago, Vuitton was no more than a small family enterprise, slightly dusty with only two stores. So how did it become the planet's leading luxury brand? 